Your commentator is Ray Henley. Italy's zero hour has arrived. The Allies' mighty air armadas launch devastating raids on the escape ports in the Messina Triangle, bombing all important transportation lines and airfields. General Bernard Montgomery tells his 8th Army Canadian troops they'll never stop until they reach Germany. Allied grand strategy against the fortress of Europe is about to be revealed. Nightfall brings a shattering barrage across the Straits of Messina. Dawn and the curtain of fire continues as British and Canadians prepare to sail for the Italian mainland. Nazi bombers attempt to smash the armada, but they are driven off. The sky is filled with steel as plane after plane fails to break through the withering barrage. Beachhead, the first invasion of Hitler's fortress Europe on the toe of the Italian boot. Now starts a great and ever-growing Allied thrust. Spearheads of Tommies and Canadians drive forward into the Calabrian foothills of southern Italy. Field guns hammer the retreating Nazis and Italians. Suddenly Mussolini, the sawdust Caesar, is kicked out of power. His balcony empire collapses. The duce of force and fraud is now decorated with rotten tomatoes. Italian newsreel films show the mounty confusion and wild disorder that sweeps Rome. A breathtaking proclamation announces that Marshal Badoglio has become the Italian premier. The fascist line in Europe is breached at last, and Rome is jubilant. Symbols of fascism everywhere go crashing to the ground. While all Italy is in a turmoil, the American Fifth Army boards landing crafts and ships of a mighty armada at an allied port on the eve of an epic struggle, a valiant crimson page in American history. The great convoy mo moves toward the Italian mainland. The fierce battle at sea is at hand. Nazi dive bombers, fighting desperately, are beaten off. American destroyers lay a smoke screen to hide the convoy as it draws closer to blazing Nazi shore batteries. Nothing can stop its determined advance. Now the enemy is throwing everything it has at the Yanks, and there are losses, but the fleet moves in. All the way, it's a desperate battle with Nazi artillery blazing away at Americans from the heights ashore. Bombers sneaking in through fighter defenses to blast a ship here and there, but our armada moves in. The usually peaceful blue sky over the Mediterranean provides a background for the fantastic spectacle of bombs and fire. Navy is in the thick of it, firing with all its power. The Nazis get the range, and one more of our ships is blazing. The grim fighting forces move ahead, inch by inch, in the face of fierce op opposition from German air fighters and desperate enemy strongholds. Another Nazi plane goes down to its doom. Struck by an inferno of shells, a big freighter laden with important supplies bursts into flame. A desperate effort is made to save her. Now a huge transport begins to disgorge troops into a landing barge as the invasion gains momentum. A landing boat is hit and bursts into flame. On and on come our men in a never-ending stream. Here comes the boat of the valiant commander, Lieutenant General Mark Clark, goes in to lead this daring thrust against the Nazis. And still they come, 
Yanks stream ashore, braving bombs, artillery, and machine gun fire. These are the first Americans to come to grips with Nazis in continental Europe. Their backs are to the sea. The Nazis have their backs to the wall. Landing boats rush in with the tools of war. Munitions and supplies of every description pour into the beachhead. Suddenly, the entire world is electrified by a startling announcement from Allied headquarters. This is General Dwight D. Eisenhower, Commander-in-Chief of the Allied Force. The Italian government has surrendered its armed forces unconditionally. Near Salerno, where the fighting is the fiercest, the tide of battle ebbs and flows. Troops under fire dig for cover as Nazi shells scream overhead. Now the tide of victory is rising as our flyers form a protective cover over our advancing troops. Our valiant 5th Army moves inland as the retreating troops of Field Marshal von Kesselring start what Berlin calls a disengaging action. General Mark Clark disregards personal safety to enter the thick of battle. German armored divisions make the Americans pay for every foot of ground. The battle shifts to the Mediterranean, where General Eisenhower boards the flagship of Britain's Admiral Cunningham, where it has reached the commanding general of the surrender of the Italian fleet. An historic hour has arrived. The Italian Navy has escaped and is steaming to an Allied port with surrender signals flying. 108 ships surrender to the Allies, including more than 50 submarines. An Italian submarine arrives with its crew and its mascot, happy to have reached safety. A British skipper goes aboard to welcome its commander. On comes the Italian Navy, a gigantic armada of fighting ships, ships that made a clean getaway despite German vigilance. The Allied commanders are jubilant. They have a reason to be. Italy now aids the Allied cause by freeing a powerful navy for use elsewhere in the global war. While the fleet is surrendering, American troops are fighting desperately. General Clark piles into a jeep to reach the front line. American artillery is in action and pounding enemy positions with unrelenting fury. The ever-mounting ferocity with which the Nazis have battled to stem the American advance exacts a high cost in pain and suffering. American ambulance men are busy everywhere. Every war plant worker on the home front has played a part here. American casualties and losses, though severe, would be far heavier if planes, guns, tanks, and ships had not been ready in tremendous numbers. General Clark and Britain's General Alexander see victory certain now. Their immediate goal is Naples, and then the road to Rome. Cameramen are in the front lines and constantly under fire as the men of the 5th Army spring into action everywhere. Smashed Nazi armor testifies to the cool accuracy of American tank busters. Signal Corps men with walkie-talkie radios keep headquarters informed of every hard-won game. Again and again, Clark's men advance on the heels of retreating Nazis. Salerno is ours, and then Naples. Italy surrenders. Its soldiers move into the Allied ranks. The strategy conceived by our fighting generals and admirals and brought to a victorious conclusion by General Eisenhower's command strikes its heaviest blow that pierces the peninsula of Italy and crushes fascism everywhere.